better video for this when I don't have printers running and I can actually just manipulate things for you. But uh, one of the things in the printer design is to have adjustment for your rails so you can align things as you go. So you would actually start by securing one end of one rail, keep the other side loose, keep the other one loose, and loose over here. So everything's kind of screwed in, but only one side is tight. And you want to start with an anchor point. So you'll start with your X all the way to one side, with that one tight, and this all the way up against on both pieces here, then you would tighten this one down. Then you're going to take your X and you're going to slide it all the way to this side, and then you're going to tighten down there and there. Don't tighten them too much because you're going to want to go all the way back and loosen both of these now. And while this is still back, then you're going to tighten them right back up. So you're going to loosen them and then tighten them. Then you're going to slide over here. Same thing. Loosen them, tighten them. Slide it again. Loosen them, tighten them. And that's going to really just help everything line itself up. That's a technique that's used on really big machines as well. So it translates well to these big, especially like mine with a bigger printer. Um, if you have the ability to do that on your x-axis as well, you can do that there. With them being as close together as they are, it's not as critical, uh, but it does help. So if you can build in the ability to do some tightening and adjusting, that's great. If not, well, it's usually not that big a deal on that axis for here. Um, it's most important on your Y because of this big distance and your Z because of the height. So on your Z, you're going to do the exact same thing after X and Y are both set up. Z should always be last because that's how you're going to get your bed to be as level as possible because you want it to be square to your X and Y. Once your X and Y are square, and you will do the same thing with your Z, but don't tighten anything too much to start. Everything's going to be fairly loose. You're going to start with your your uh, your rods on there. Get your bed mounted. Use your print head to kind of level everything out. And if you've designed it properly, you've only done three-point leveling on your bed. Three-point is way better than four-point, and you will not have used anything to uh, warp your print bed. So if you've secured it with binder clips then you have to be extremely careful how you do that so you don't warp the glass because glass will actually warp fairly easy. Um, it's not much but it's enough to throw off the level of the bed. So I was very careful in the way that I did my design so that the, the glass is not warped at all even though I've used binder clips. It did not um, start out that way. It took several tries and variations to get it just right. But I do only have three-point leveling. There's one there just off the edge of the bed, which is not as ideal as having it just under the bed, but I wanted it easy to access. So there's the second point, and the third point is actually under the bed. Uh, I know exactly where it's out on there, so I utilize that as my starting point, and then I go to my other two points to level off of that. Uh, so you've got your bed is now level to your X and Y, but now you need your rails to be square. Um, this is where you're going to have your bed start at the top. You'll screw in all four or however many points you've got for your rails, uh, depending on your machine design. And then you're going to use the actual machine screws there and there to take the bed all the way down, all the way down, as far as it will go. 
You're going to loosen up your points for your rails and tighten them up. Then you're going to go all the way back up and do the same thing. Loosen and tighten. All the way back down, loosen and tighten. Then you're going to go back and level your bed again. This is going to help ensure that everything is as square as possible. That's just the, the real quick... Um, it really doesn't take that long to do it uh, method, but that's, that's what I do and it works out really, really well. Um, the other thing that you're going to have to do is make sure that your X is square to Y. You don't want it um, angled at all. And the best way to do that is if you have a point of reference of something that is square with everything else. For me, let's see, this back rail, uh, or the back piece of aluminum here is actually very square with everything. So I actually eyeball it, I close one eye, this is an old inspection technique, I close one eye and I move this x-axis to line up with this when I've got one eye closed, I should be able to see it perfectly here to here lined up. And with the motors off, I can tweak one side, adjust it just a little tiny bit, and line it up. Uh, and as long as your belts are tensioned properly, it should hold. Uh, you know, I've used two motors here, so it, it has a more of a tendency to be off, and I just realign it when I need to. But if you had a, you know, an X, a core XY, or even just the the rail, or you know, the the extra rod tying them together, then it tends to hold that a little bit better. But if you need to line it up, find a, a very straight point that you can actually do that with, if possible. And that's that's what I do on mine. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty more tips that I can think of, and I'll have to come up with those later and make another video for you.